Hi, I'm Monty McKinnon. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm working on putting in the sound port, but before we get there, I want to talk to you about the truss rod and changing a truss rod. First of all, if you're doing a truss rod on a lacquered guitar, I would recommend that you get yourself a scalpel and or a good sharp razor blade to score the side of the fingerboard where it meets the neck very carefully. Just put a line across there like so on both sides because that'll help hold the lacquer together so when you lift the fingerboard off, it's, it's not going to fracture. Now, there are certain tools that we're going to be using to do this, and one of them here is a spatula. This is available at any of the you know typical hardware stores. You can, you'll find this anywhere. And then what I've done is I've taken it, I have a grinding wheel. If you have that, fine, but just be careful. I just simply hold it up like this. If you don't have a grinding wheel, but you've got a, a disc sander, you can do the same thing and just hold it up against the disc sander because I want to thin this down. I want this area up in here as thin as I can possibly get it. Now, the next thing you do is you get yourself a piece of sandpaper, you put it down on the bench, and then you simply take your spatula and move it around like so until you get a good sharp edge on here like a oh yeah that's 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 definitely sharp yeah that's that's like a razor blade i could yeah that took a little bit of nail so you're going to need one of those the reason you need that is here's here's an example Here's the fingerboard and the neck. Now, obviously this is not finished, but it will give you an idea. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna heat the wood and we're also gonna heat this and we're gonna fire this up in here, starting here. And we wanna be very gentle when we do that. Now, in both cases with the French polish and with the lacquer, I start with a razor blade on the side here just to get it cut so that it's there and if that doesn't work I'll, I'll try the scalpel but the razor blade has worked successfully for me and so I would I would recommend doing that and sticking with that now the other tool that we're going to need to do this is a, a heat gun these are available in any of the automotive shops and they're about twenty dollars and you just simply plug it in and you what I do is I I heat up the the board but i also heat this until i get this really good and hot so that when it goes underneath the fingerboard it's going to melt the glue and that's the whole key to doing this so to get to that stage to do that we have to take the frets off so here's a picture of the frets removed from the guitar that i just worked on we're down into oh, around uh, 14, 15, where we've taken all the other frets off. And you can see me removing some frets here in this next little video here. You'll see that right there. Now I take the, the frets off carefully, very carefully, and I put them on a uh, paper towel. So I, I, I know I've got them all. Now, in order to get the frets off properly, what I use is Starbond the uh, remover, you know, the debonder. So what I do with that debonder, as you can see in the video, is I, I splash them on each of the frets. I'm fairly generous because I want it to run underneath. And then I use the pliers and very gently, they come in like so and grab the, the, the fret and lift it. I want to avoid tear out, but that does happen at, on some occasions. Now, that the frets are all out, what I've done is I then put the neck in a support piece, uh, a jig that I have for supporting the neck, and then I put the iron on top of it to heat the wood. Now what I did initially, because I did not want to burn the wood, I wanted to make sure it was okay, is I put a piece of aluminum foil there, and then eventually I took that aluminum foil off. But the key here is to use gentle heat, not to, to you know, you're not steaming the wood, you're not getting into a high heat here because it could damage the wood. But you want to put that on there so that when you pick the iron off and you feel the wood, it's, it's warm to the touch, not hot that you go, oh, I can't touch this, but it's just, it's just 
warm. Then get the spatula in underneath and start to very gently wiggle it until you can see the glue starting to come up. Now, as you do that, what's going to happen is the fretboard will lift off. It, it, it will come up, but it will also curl. So what you do is you take it and you put it on your workbench, and I put it on my side workbench here, as you can see in this picture, and I clamp it at both ends and in the middle. So it's perfectly flat because I'm going to use the same fretboard, and, and I, you know, I want it perfectly flat. So I've done that. Now, the neck here, you'll see in this next picture, um, I've clamped the fretboard on, I've glued it, I had some help with this just because of my shaking hands. I wanted to make sure I got this perfect so I could feel it on, on the sides and we were able to clamp it into place and then I left those clamps in place for quite some time. So the new truss rod is in and the neck is back onto, uh, the fingerboard's back on the neck and the sides are, are, are fine and I, I would sand those down again just to treat those up again with the uh, French polish, which was not a, a big deal. Now, um, one of the things you'll see here is I I do a, the compound radius. We're at the bottom end up and around from about eight or nine on to 20. I'm using a 20 foot radius block and I sand it back and forth and then up at the at the top at the first fret up to about the eight, I'm doing a 16 foot radius. So it becomes a compound. So I, where the eighth is, they kind of blend in together. And I, I want to make sure that that's, that's working just, just fine. So that's what we did there. Now, what comes up next, um, after you see this, you'll see me here where I'm bending the fret wire to put a radius on the fret wire so that when it goes in, it it, it, it holds and it, it won't pop up. So I've, I've done that. And then as I did that, I clamped it along. Now I have a real short uh, time-lapse video. I, I'll show you just a few seconds of it because it's crazy fast. And, and I put the frets in with the drill press and I pressed the frets into place and I nipped the ends of them as I went along. Once that's done, you then take your file and you sand the edges of the frets to get them flush with the side of the neck of the guitar, and, and then you're, you're good to go. So, once that is all done, I'm back to the Starbond super glue. And I super glue each of the frets in place. I just put a little bead. It doesn't have to be much along the, the side. As long as I know the frets are down and, and in place, I put it on each side. And then you'll see here in the next picture where I take the razor blade and I scrape the fret back and forth just to make sure I've cleaned out all any marks of crazy glue to get it all cleaned up. And, and then, I, of course, I treat the wood with, with a lemon oil to to uh, enrich the, the wood. So we, we do that and clean up the frets. And then uh, what happens is, as you'll see in this next movie, you'll see where I have a piece of glass. This is plate glass. It's, it's, it's about a quarter of an inch thick and it's about eight or nine inches long. I start with this and I put sandpaper around it and I run it across the frets to level the frets. And then the next thing I do is I use a longer metal bar to do the same thing. So I've leveled it with the glass. I've leveled it with a, a guaranteed flat uh, bar that has sandpaper on it. Then the third thing I do is I take the, uh, the wooden radius block again, and I put the radius onto the frets just to make sure that the edges of the frets are coming down. And hopefully that will prevent any kind of buzzing that you might get on, on the frets. So we do that and then uh, what I do is mark each of the tops of the frets once they're flattened and then I come with a tool to, to put the curve back on the fret. So I, I want a little bit of a flat area on the top so I'm able to file that down until I get a thin little line and then I clean that all up. So it's not that difficult to do. 
the uh, next step and the pretty well the final step is then to rub the the French polish on and I put several coats of that on you can see this in in the uh, particular picture of the neck here and you'll see as I examine the neck to make sure it looks pretty good and uh, we're all good and then the final thing you'll see is where I have it now clamped to the body of the guitar. I have made sure it lines up straight. I made sure I, I did a little bit of a reset on, on the guitar. It wasn't much needed in that regard. So when you do want to lower the action on the or the playability of your guitar, you do it at the nut and at the saddle. And I would be very careful about how I do it at the at the nut. I would take that down just so ever so slightly to make sure that it's working well. And then f at the uh, end of the saddle, I, I would take the saddle out and I would sand it flat on a flat piece of uh, sandpaper and then put it back in. And if need be, take it out again and do it again. And I try to get it down at the 12th to around the... 90, 94, 95 uh, mark, and the uh, high E is is ideally in the 70s or, or early 80s, so that it follows the same radius. So that's that's it in in, in a nutshell. What I did, and that took uh, best part of you know waiting for glue to dry and all of that. It took several days to get that done. And it worked out extremely well. It's not a big deal. Now, if you are going to mess with your truss rod and adjust it, you do that so carefully because you do not want a big turn. To go from here to here is a massive turn on a truss rod. So what you do is you hold down at the first fret and you hold your thumb on 14 and then take your finger and just tap up around 6 and 7 and you want just a slight little bit of room there so that the strings are coming over and are not going to cause any buzzing. So you would then maybe adjust the truss rod from here to there, not here. Go from here to maybe there. And, and, and if you need to do any more, you can do that. But be very careful about messing around with that. Well, that's it for this video on, on the truss rod. And uh, what I have to do now is get onto this. And I asked in a poll what you wanted, whether you wanted an oval or, or whether you wanted circles or, you know, what would you like? And the consensus came back more geometric type designs like I did on the maple guitar. So I've drawn those on here on this uh, uh, paper here. This, this is obviously green tape. And I will now take the drill and put in the bit and I'm going over here and I'm going to start drilling and, and filing that. I'll show you all of that once that's all done. So that's it for me. Thank you so much for joining me. I know it's a long video today. Appreciate you hanging in. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out Leo Santorelli, okay, because he's got some interesting stuff coming along the line here. And by all means, check out Michael Builds. Now, Michael Builds is doing some incredible work, and you really do need to see what he's up to. The man is crazy. He's funny. He, he does some absolutely super videos, and I know you'll love it. So check out my friend Michael Builds, and check out Leo Santorelli. You'll find some links to uh, the Starbond down below. You'll find links to... Uh, the Oasis humidifier, which I recommend. Make sure you keep your guitars humidified and in a case. Don't leave them out this summer. And somebody this week told me, this week told me they left a guitar in the back of a car in the summer and it got up to 35 degrees. And you know what happened? Boing. Yeah, the top split and came apart because it's glue and glue comes apart with heat. That's why we use the heat gun to get the fingerboard off the, off the neck. So don't do that. Be careful with your guitars. Keep them humidified and keep them locked up. All right, I'll see you again in the next video. Bye for now. Oh man.